What's up guys, Laura Whitmore here, owner of Strategic Test Prep. And I have another video for you guys today, all about the digital SAT. I'm in the middle of my digital SAT series, so welcome back. If you have yet to subscribe to my channel and you're taking the digital SAT this year, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss out on future content because I've got all the juicy tips, tricks, and details for you on that. Also, make sure you like this video if you find it useful, show me some love. And just a heads up, if you're still taking the paper test this year and you're in the US, that's awesome, so am I. So we're on the same page, no pun intended. But I have an online self-paced course that'll be perfect for you. It's all updated for 2023. I'll throw the link in the description below and link it up here right now, check that out. And you guys, I have a little secret for all of you that are watching today. So stick around for later on the video because I'm gonna reveal something, a kind of big announcement. And so yeah, more to come on that. So in this video, I really dove deep into the math side of the digital SAT to find out how the scoring algorithm works, what kind of concepts are on there, just everything basically you need to know to be able to crush the math part. So here we go. Okay, so some of you might be just only focusing on the math side of the digital SAT. And when I started practicing in Blue Book, the Blue Book exams app by College Board, I would get so annoyed because when I wanted to just do one side of the test, I still had to answer all of the questions for the other side of the test. But I just found out a cool little trick yesterday. You can skip over the English portions when you're in a practice test if you wanna get right to the math. So you basically just click on the bottom, click review test, and then next and you're on to the next section, which is really awesome. I had no idea that that was available. Okay, here's something interesting about the layout of the math. You have 22 questions per section and 35 minutes to answer them. You guys, this is an exorbitant amount of time. You have over a minute and a half per question. You'll probably get done early. You can take your dog for a walk. You can clean your room. You could finish your homework for your math class. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous how much time there is now. So anyways, if time is an issue for you, um, then this is definitely a better test than the ACT. So the ACT is still an option for you guys out there. Um, it's my understanding though, the ACT is also digital if you're international. So you're really just trading one computer test for the other. But the ACT math is 60 minutes and 60 questions. So if you don't like to feel rushed, or if you have the attention span of a gnat, you might want to just consider going with the digital SAT anyways, because um, that is a grind, you guys. The ACT math is no joke. Something interesting, the paper test was 10% geometry. They've slightly increased that, so the digital SAT is comprised of 15% geometry. It's really not that much more, please don't freak out, but there's definitely more of an emphasis on triangles and circles and trig stuff. Margin of error is something new that just started showing up on the paper-based test too. So I'm not gonna say it's exclusive to the digital SAT, but you should anticipate a word problem in calculating margin of error. There's also interpreting equation questions, like they'll give you an equation, maybe like, 3x plus 2y equals 30, and they'll give you a story behind it. So then they'll ask you, well, what does the number three stand for in this context? Or what does the number 30 stand for in this context? So that's something kind of new. They weren't really asking for like the interpretation of an equation on the paper-based test. They're also asking more about quadratics where a is greater than one. And I think that this is because you have a calculator for the entire math now. So they might ask you to find the minimum or the maximum of a quadratic that starts out with a leading term of 4x squared. Guys, there's a really easy way to deal with this. Use your graphing calculator, put it in the y equals. But again, make sure you understand that now that you can use a calculator on the whole thing, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, people were complaining about not being able to use a calculator, but all of the answers on section three were easy numbers. They were whole numbers, they were integers. If they were decimals, it was like 0.5. And now on the digital SAT, anticipate more kind of strange answers like 0.8824 or 25 fourths. You're not gonna have just whole numbers, so it's gonna be harder to gauge if you're on the right track or not. Also, that being said, just a little tip for you guys before I get into the scoring algorithm. Um, just because you can use a calculator on this whole section doesn't mean that's all you should do. They're gonna give you scrap paper. Write down your work on the scrap paper. Like, please, 
please write down your work because I don't know if this has happened to you. I could pretty much bet money that it has. We all sometimes type things in the calculator and type it in wrong and not realize it. And then we're trusting the answer the calculator is spitting out and it's not even right. If you write down your work, you'll be able to catch your careless mistakes. You'll have something to refer back to if you need to go back to the question. Definitely write down your work. Okay, so I ran trials to find out how the math scoring algorithm works. Is it gonna be easy to get a perfect score on the math? I was a little disappointed after finding out how tough it is with the English scoring algorithm to get a very high score. And I will link that video up here right now if you guys wanna check that out. So just to you know recap for those of you that are new to this channel or who have missed maybe some of my other videos, this test is adaptive and it's adapted by section. You have two math sections. The first section will determine if you get an easier or harder second section. You want to get the harder second section because it's worth more points than an easier second section. So you really want to do really, really well on the first section to set yourself up for success. So I wanted to find out how many math questions can you miss and still get that harder second section to try to maximize your points. So the answer is 10. Out of the 22 questions on section one, you can miss 10 math questions and you'll still get the harder second section. That being said, if you end up getting every single thing right on the second section, the highest score you can max out on is a 680. But that's your number. Just know you need to like get at least 12 right on the first section to make that happen. Trial two, I actually ran where I got 11 wrong on the first section to get the easier second section. And then I got all the questions right on the easier second section and I maxed out at a 560. So if you get 11 wrong on the first section, the highest score you can get is a 560. That's 120 points down from the other scenario. So guys, you really, really, really gotta do well on that first section. Otherwise you're gonna take like a 120 point hit. Okay, trial three, I was just kind of messing around. I was curious to see what would happen if I missed maybe like a handful of questions. So I missed one question on section one and then I missed three questions on section two because it felt like a realistic scenario to me. A student might miss more questions on section two than section one. And I ended up still in the 700s. I got a 720. So you can miss four and still be in the 700s. I don't know how good a news that is though, because on the paper-based test, there was more math questions. Now you only have 44 questions total. And so when you had 58 questions to work off of on the paper-based test, you had more wiggle room. Like getting four wrong on the paper-based test would land you like a 780. Okay, my next trial, I missed two questions because I was wondering, you know, what would happen if I missed two questions? And so I missed two questions on the first section and still got a 790. So that is huge. I mean, like the, it seems like the conversion chart is pretty good once you get way up to the tippy top. They give you a little leeway. And so on my next trial, what I did was I tried to figure out well, what would happen if I missed just one question. So I missed one question on the easier section and got everything else right, and I got a perfect 800. So then on the next trial, I was wondering, well, would this change if maybe I missed just one question on the harder section? So I got everything right on the easy section, missed one on the hard section, and guys, I got an 800 again. So it's not like the English sections where, remember I missed one on the harder section and they dropped me down to a 770? This is the easiest time, in my opinion, ever in the history of the SAT that you can gun for a perfect score and get it. So if you took the paper test last year and you're really discouraged with your math score, this is some good news for you. This digital SAT might be the way to go. It's gonna be, I think, a lot easier to get an 800 or a 790 than it ever has been before. Also, I promise you guys, I would give you a pretty big announcement. I'm designing and creating an app right now. It's in the development stage. It's gonna be called Preply. And it's gonna help you guys prep for the digital SAT with brand new questions that you've never seen. Because let's face it, right now, the digital SAT only has so many practice questions to go off of. All right, guys, that's it for this video on the digital SAT math sections. If you want me to do another video going over concepts in the digital SAT math, like I mentioned some of them earlier, comment below, let me know. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you again soon. Happy prepping.